In this section we're going to how, have a look at how we organize and arrange content in documents and for this uh, particular exercise we're going to use the office procedures practice file that you can find in the chapter 10 folder. Now what I'd like you to do is click on the view tab and you'll see here we have several document views. Now we're going to look at the outline view. This can give us a, an overview of uh, a document itself. Now we have a new outlining tab that has appeared along the top with various options here. There's an option to, to show the text formatting so that we can see uh, broadly what the uh, document looks like and we can see different types of header and so on. Um, and uh, we've got an option to uh, show the first line only of text. Um, you can see if you look at the deliveries of shipping supplies line you'll see what happens with that uh, paragraph there when I tick and untick that box. We can also show different levels of uh, text here. We've got some uh, segments here you'll see I've got a plus next to them and at the moment the show level is set to all levels. If we just show level 1 then we can see that there are three main headers in the text. If we show levels 1 and 2 we can see subheaders and so on and so forth and we can double click on these uh, pluses to open and close those particular sections. So these are the uh, this is the broad thrust of the uh, the outlining tools here but you can also here you can see drag sections of the text around by grabbing these uh, pluses and uh, moving things around in the document here. So let's say we want to move contact information under facilities, we can do that there, move ordering supplies to the top, and it's a really, really simple way of being able to rearrange entire blocks of text in the document. When you're done with this, press the close outline view, and uh, here you know we'll be able to see that uh, text has indeed been uh, moved around uh, within this document. Now in the next segment we're going to look at how we arrange objects on a page. Now that we've looked at how to reorganize documents in the outline view, let's have, uh, have a look at other ways of rearranging, rearranging documents on the page. And for this exercise we're going to be using the bamboo info practice, uh, practice file which you can find in the chapter 10 folder. Now, here we can see we have a beautiful bamboo uh, document, we've got some text here, we've got an image, and the text has been shunted down the page somewhat because we've got this image here. Now I've spoken before about how we can uh, wrap text around other objects. So if you click on this image here you'll see a uh, picture tools format tab has appeared. Now as well as giving us all sorts of other options for that uh, picture, we have a wrap text button here. And you'll see here uh, the different ways that we can wrap text uh, around um, objects here. So square is a, a good way of wrapping the text and it gives you a lot of control over where that uh, image goes. But you can get even more control um, than you just see here. We can edit the wrap points around an object, so as you can see here in the image you can perhaps cut off a corner of it and there are yet more layout options here. Now here are the options that we have just seen and we uh, have additional options and we can set the distance from the text as well so if I, if I move that then when I press OK you'll see the distance from the text here on the object press OK and the text has now moved further away. Again if we select more layout options on the position tab we can absolutely position um, this item um, anywhere within uh, that page uh, anywhere within the text. Um, by default if you're uh, wrapping text around uh, um, uh, an item, be that uh, an image or anything else, it's, it's, it's all relative positioning but here we can uh, specify absolute positioning for items on the page. And there's yet more. 
Here we have options to bring items forward on the page, send them backwards on the page, if you have stacked items for instance. And uh, there are alignment options here. We can align things left, center, right, top, middle and bottom. And grid lines is something that we haven't looked at yet. Let's turn on grid lines, view grid lines. You can also turn on the grid lines in the view tab on the ribbon here. Now we have grid lines. Now if we click on this align button again and go to the grid settings, we can see here that it's set when you've got grid lines on to automatically snap objects to the grid lines. And we can change the spacing of the grid lines. Let's say we want um, a one centimeter grid on the page here. So we can press the OK button when we're done and we see we have a one centimeter grid. Now, if we go and move this object around, you'll see here that it's snapping it to this grid, which is a, uh, a very useful way of being able to move uh, documents, uh, move items around and snap them in the right places. There you go. We can move it into the middle and have the text wrap around it. Again, when you want to uh, view the uh, document more easily and get rid of those grid lines, you can go to the View tab and turn them off. So there are all sorts of ways about arranging documents. And you remember I talked about Bring Forward and Send Backwards. Let's right-click on this image and we'll create a copy of it. And then we'll right-click and, we'll and we will uh, paste it in again. Now we can see here that we've got uh, these two images are now overlaid on top of one another. Now let's change one of them so that we can tell them apart. We'll make it um, rounded, have it rounded corners. Now we don't want the one with the rounded corners in the front, we want, uh, we want it at the back. So we can click on the other document, we can select bring forward or uh, any other options there and we can move items around in the document in their layers as well. So that's how we arrange objects on a page and in the next segment we're going to look about how we use tables to control page layout. Okay, so carrying on looking at how we arrange objects on pages, let's have a look at how we can use tables to control page layout. Now this is probably something that will be familiar to anyone who's done uh, website design, as tables um, are often used to uh, control uh, uh, content on, the, on a page. Now for this exercise we're going to be using the delivery truck purchase practice file that's in the chapter 10 folder. Now here we want to be able to better organize this text here. So we want to be able to have more than one payment schedule type. So we want to be able to uh, make a copy of, of this which we can do by right clicking on it and selecting copy and then clicking and uh, selecting paste. Now this hasn't worked has it? It's not selected a whole table and it's just selected the data and it's it's just not working really. So we want to be able to um, have these two payment schedule tables right next to each other. So let's put in a couple of carriage returns here and we'll go to insert table. Now let's have a table that is one row by two columns and I'll explain why. Now this table here we uh, click the icon in its top left we can drag and drop inside that cell. Now we can either have uh, text uh, to, uh, to the right of this, we can uh, uh, cut this text for instance or we can paste it uh, in that cell or we could put another table here that's exactly the same. If we want to uh, copy this table we can paste, we'll uh, see the options here, there you go, nest table and we can paste the table there and we can change these options, uh, this text here, we can say 4.5% over 5 years, 
monthly repayment will say is uh, five thousand six hundred and forty five pounds for sake of argument and so on. This outer table we can then uh, click on this outer table and in the uh, uh, design and layout tab we can turn the borders off so it doesn't even look like there's a table there but we now have two uh, tables nested very neatly side by side and it's all very neatly arranged and you can use tables for organizing all types of um, uh, all types of text and all kinds of objects within word documents in as I've said exactly the same way that you might do for a website so that's how we can use tables to control um, uh, layouts of, uh, of content on a page and that's it for this section and in the next section we're going to create documents for use outside of Microsoft Word 2010